Okay, I'm going to sell my engine light. It's kind of like a family member. It's been in the family since about 1968. When I bought it, it was a non-functional piece of equipment. Some parts missing on it. And over the time, I got it working. And I've used it all these years. And now I've like I lack interest in uh, in doing much of anything anymore. So it and all this accessories are gonna go. Everything but the the plug. <laughs> plug stays with the building. It's a special plug that I made. And the little cart minus the drill bits and the reamers and stuff. Uh, they don't go. You're gonna have to but all the accessories that belong to the lathe will go. Uh, there's a tool post grinder in case you run across the job where someone's chromed up a shaft where a bearing spun on it in order to get the chrome down to size for the new bearing, you're going to have to use a grinder. There's steady rest, uh, 16 inch face plate, there's four jaw chuck. Now it, it was cracked but I put a steel ring around it and it works just fine. Uh, the only problem I ever had with it is there's been a time or two I wished it was larger. Now the three jaw chuck, it's got plenty of, plenty of size to it. The swing over the carriage is four and three quarter inches. So that allows you to do about, uh, that allows you to do nine and a half inch diameter. The swing over the bed looks like it's about an eight and a quarter. So you can do a 16 inch diameter wheel. There's a, a 16 inch, I think, face plate down there so it has it has great capacity uh, you've got a weld shop and you just need to turn a piece once in a while this might be the machine you want because of its capacity I mean to to, to buy a machine with this capacity new would cost about thirty thousand dollars and uh, I think this would be a bargain at two thousand the uh, motor is a repulsion motor and to reverse it all you've got to do is just move the brushes to a new location there's there's lines that you line up for forward and reverse uh, that, that's the kind of motor that preceded induction motors and the different speeds the top speed is uh, 420 and the lowest speed I guess in back gear is 25. The back gear has been repaired. It came this way. I don't know where it is but somewhere somebody put a bunch of pins in place of where some teeth had been knocked out. And I really thought, well, heck, that isn't going to hold up. Well, it's held up ever since. Uh, I don't see them, but somewhere there's a bunch of pins in place of uh, teeth. And uh, they, they've held up all these years. They've never given any trouble. Seems to me like when I got it, there were some teeth missing down here, and I had to make some teeth for down here. Now, now the cross feed has quit working. I very seldom ever use the power cross feed anyway. Uh, longitudinally the feed still works and being a handy lathe it doesn't have a thread dial. Uh, you leave it engaged and you reverse it while it's running. If any of you know about old handy lathes or not. But uh, Latest date, patent date on it is in 1899. It was quite a Cadillac back then. As you can see, it's, it's got a taper attachment and it worked. I've used it before. And there's a gear down here. I, 
I made years ago. And I, I don't know if that gear allows you to do metric or not. I don't remember what the deal was. Uh, I know that uh, the machine that I needed to make some screws for would would not been functional unless they had these screws to put them back together. So they paid me for making that gear. And I think before I even made the gear, I had to make a plate for my dividing head. It was quite a long ordeal, but it got their machine going. They were happy. Um, that device right here, that will allow you to do disc brakes. If you want to do your own disc brakes, it would be quicker and cheaper just to take it to, uh, to a shop and have them do the regular brake lay, but you can do disc brakes with it. There's lathe tool bits too, lifetime supply. I'll, I'll let you have most of them. There might be a few in there I want to pick out, but most of them will go. <laughs> the chip pan is from a door of my mom's old refrigerator from the 1940s. Waste not, want not. The last items that go with it are any steel, round steel, not not counting the tubing, but the solid steel that's over, uh, I'm going to say over three and a half inches or four, anything over three and a half inches automatically go with a lathe. So all your big round stock, you, you can have every bit of the large round stock that's here. After signing a piece of paper that says if you get hurt loading it or you tear anything up uh, that you're responsible, you're welcome to use the chain hoist frame and, and the hoist to, to try and help load it. I don't suggest a wide trailer though because the, the, this isn't going to straddle, it'll, it'll straddle a pickup truck which was what it was made to do, but uh, I don't know about one with dual dual wheels. It might not straddle that. But uh, you'll pay me the cash first. You'll sign that piece of paper before you touch the lathe, and then I'm of no help. I'm I'm not I'm not physically able to do much anymore. So you you'll have to bring your own crew. To, to, to load the lathe.